what is going on guys welcome back to another swift video in today's video we're going to be talking all about web views specifically we're going to put together the app you see here where we have a web view you can load in a url we're going to talk about how you can inject javascript and enable javascript in your web view as well as overriding other things like the user agent and some more things so Make sure you destroy the like button before we get started. Helps out with the YouTube algorithm and the videos. Get excited. If you're new to the channel, welcome. Hit subscribe, get pumped, open up Xcode. Let's talk about some web views. Quick pause before the video. This video is brought to you by iosacademy.io. Head on over to check out the newly launched TikTok and Swift UI courses. Learn to build world-class professional apps in a fraction of the time, quickly and efficiently. That said, let's get back to the video. All right, we're gonna get started by opening up Xcode and creating a new project here. We wanna stick with the app template under the iOS tab and let's give a project a cool name of our web view. Make sure of course your language is Swift and your lifecycle is UI kit. Go ahead and continue, save it wherever you'd like. And the first thing we want to do is expand our Xcode window here, close this right panel, and jump into our view controller file here. I'm also going to select a simulator and hit the run button at the top left to get this building and showing up in our simulator like so. And we're going to get straight away into it. So the first thing we want to do is import the WebKit framework that Apple provides us. It's built into the iOS SDK. And this is the framework that contains not only the web view, but a bunch of other cool web view related things. Uh, back in the day, it used to be a part of UI kit, something called UI web view. Uh, that is no longer supported here in 2021 and moving onward. So we do need to import this. The next thing we're gonna do is we're simply going to declare a web view, which is a WK web view, WK being web kits. In view to load, we wanna go ahead and add it as a sub view. And then I'm also going to override view did layout sub views. And we want to go ahead and give this a frame to match the entirety of the view for this controller. So we're going to say view dot bounds. Now, of course, it's a web view. So we want to go ahead and load in a URL. So first we are going to create a URL. Uh, now URL constructors return optional in case this URL string is malformed. So we want to put it in a guard. I'm going to say the URL is iosacademy.io. Once you've created your URL, you can simply, let me go ahead and fix those curly braces there. Once you've gone ahead and created this, you can simply load it into the UR, rather into the web view by saying web view. And we're going to say load, and we want to load in a URL request. And we can create a URL request by passing in a URL to it. And that's literally it. So go ahead and hit Command R to build and run. And you should see your website load in uh, just a moment here. So here is the website. You can scroll, go through it. Pretty slick, pretty simple. So that's easy enough. Let's talk about JavaScript for a moment here. Now, by default, the WK WebView does not enable JavaScript. So we are able to specify configuration for our web view, uh, which with the internet nowadays, JavaScript is pretty critical. So how do we do that? We're gonna create this uh, web view with the anonymous closure pattern here, where we can create the web view in this block and we can uh, return it here. But we're gonna use the constructor that takes a frame as well as a configuration we're gonna define this configuration right up above, above this, which is called a WK web view configuration. Now on this configuration, we want to assign the default web page preferences, which I'm gonna call prefs. And we're gonna create this right above, uh, right here. So we're gonna say prefs equals WK web page preferences. And on the prefs, we need to enable allows content JavaScript and assign it to true. So pretty simple, a little verbose, but we're just saying the preferences for the web page is enable JavaScript. So how do we actually inject our own JavaScript? Because that's, that's where things start to get a little more interesting. So we are going to create another block here that gets executed after, uh, let's say now plus five seconds. 
And let's say we wanted to get all the HTML from this uh, web page. And uh, if you're not familiar with JavaScript, just bear with me here. We're gonna say uh, evaluate uh, JavaScript. And we want this first one here. The first parameter is basically the JavaScript you wanna run. So we're gonna say document.body.innerHTML. For those of you that you know, know JavaScript, this will return the body HTML. And the completion will have a results and optionally an error here. And in the completion block, we're gonna say guard let HTML is our results as a string. And we're gonna make sure our error is nil, just like that. And for the sake of this demo, we'll just go ahead and print out our HTML. So let's go ahead and give this a run. Let me expand our console here. And after about five seconds, we should see a dump of the HTML from this website, which in fact we do. So here's all of our HTML. Uh, clearly it's quite a lot, just like any website, we've got some divs and you know, all that good stuff that you would expect to have in HTML. So that's how you can evaluate JavaScript uh, in your web view. Now I'm gonna share one more thing here and then I might do separate videos on some more advanced web view things because it's pretty long. Uh, let's say you wanted to specify a custom user agent. So here we are loading in the mobile website, of course, uh, but let's say we wanted to load in the desktop website for any particular reason. Let's say you wanna scrape a website. Uh, you could specify a custom user agent string and you know you can just Google all the user agents for you know desktop browsers, whether it's Chrome or Safari or whatever, and you can paste it in here. So let's say we wanted a custom user agent string of, I don't know, iPad uh, slash Chrome slash something random. Uh, if you give it a run, your user agent for the web view will be the string. I think we're still gonna see the We'll still see the uh, mobile web view because uh, we're not passing in a desktop user agent here, but this is how you would override that. Uh, it's pretty simple and it's pretty powerful. So that is how you can create a web view in a nutshell. Basically import WebKit, go ahead and define it with uh, you know the configuration you want. This WK configuration has a bunch of things on it you can define. Um, you know, things like caching policy, how cookies get saved for all of my web developer friends, and then uh, just add it and load it in, 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 to, in a URL. And there's also a delegate where you can get things like, you know, once the web page has loaded, call this block, or if it failed to load, et cetera, et cetera. You know, sky's the limit with web views. So that's all I've got for you guys today. If you haven't hit the like button already, make sure to do so. It helps out with all the videos and channel. Subscribe if you're new, if you enjoy the video, and comment any questions, feedback, concerns. Love hearing from you guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one.